LearScript is an attempt to enable everyone to create free and interactive online courses without the need of being an experienced programmer. Instead, it aims to bring both parties, software and course developers, closer together by introducing open source techniques into the open course development process. LearScript was designed to be compatible to common markdown, but it introduces lots of language extensions that deal with quizzes, surveys, ASCII art, text-to-speech, animations, online programming, the integration of JavaScript, etc. As well as its own macro system that simplifies tedious and repetitive tasks. It comes along with its own just-in-time compiler that runs in the browser and therefore does not require additional tooling. LearScript was initially developed within the Industrial Lab project. Opening square bracket. One. Dot. Single quote dot. Which aims to make university hardware and laboratories accessible via the internet. But. We soon realized that only by giving remote access to these resources via a fancy website we will. Run into problems. Our mobile Arduino bots could be used to teach programming. Sensing, navigation, dive into operating systems or even to apply artificial intelligence. Thus, the real problem was to develop an extendable and adaptable system for creating courses. Instead of a single web app, with different objectives and for students with different backgrounds. Surely, creating an online course from scratch requires a lot of expertise in different web technologies at Front-end, e, g, html, javascript, css, testing. Back-end, e, g, web servers, databases. And different communication standards to connect both sides. e, g, crud, web sockets, ajax. Dot. Hence, it is nearly impossible for a non-programmer to understand all of these issues before starting to develop his or her own online course. Screen or podcasts are not a real alternative, since they are expensive and time-consuming in production, not easy to change or translate, and require additional skills in movie cutting. That is why platforms such as Udacity or Coursey invest a lot of effort and money in high-quality course productions which is comparable to movie productions, including screenplays, actors, different sets and locations. Fortunately, there are so-called leering management systems, LMS, Dobre, 2015, that try to ease the course development. But how is such a kind of simplicity achieved? Mostly by offering integrated configuration systems editors and authoring tools that shall enable the user to create a course with a lot of buttons and menus sub sub menus and masks whose only purpose is to hide the non-intuitive syntax and semantics of a language that can be easily interpreted machines not by humans more or less all the aforementioned systems have drawbacks in some of the following points Pinpoints 1 and 2 can be easily solved by applying a purely text-based approach for the course. Development and version control systems. 3. Opening parenthesis. Joey Al.2018. Dot. All required resources. Including images. Videos. Data sheets. JavaScript and CSS styles and everything else can be easily uploaded and made available via the internet. Markdown. Wikipedia, 2019, is a simple meta markup language used to structure and annotate simple text documents. Its goal is to keep the source text easy to read and write. That is why it has become more or less the standard documentation format for open source projects. Originally, 
it was developed to write HTML content efficiently, without having to use a WYSIWYG. 2. Editor. Directly writing a markup language such as HTML is considered too error-prone and annoying for the writing process. Of course. We are not the first ones that apply markdown to ship educational contents. Earlier examples are Of course there are other approaches that have to be mentioned. McKiernan, 2017, comma. But the commonality of all system is that it's about creating static documents. Which, although it is translated into a more beautiful format, still have to be read. To our knowledge, our approach is the only one that deals with the creation of interactive presentations. Which are still generated from simple and static markdown documents. In contrast to other Markdown compilers that generate static HTML, Lia Script is an interpreter that downloads and renders the original Markdown document directly within the browser. That means, if the document is updated, the resulting representation will be updated too. Thus, there is no need for additional tooling, compiling steps, or server-side support. Lia Script was implemented from scratch with Elm. 3. For efficiency and speed, which includes its own parser and runtime environment. One of our design goals was to support different rendering modes, which covers the traditional textbook mode, next to presentations with animations and spoken text. Furthermore, we extended the language itself with various features. That should transform Markdown from a traditionally static markup approach into something new. Suitable for interactive online courses and more. Why does Markdown only support static content? We came a long way from written scrolls to printed books to electronic books. Which can still be printed out or copied by hand. But, actually it is the same old format that has been brought to a new device. Although a computer and the internet give us much more opportunities for visualization, interaction, and storytelling, Markdown support. Markdown supports two types of links. Onto internal and external resources, which can be either direct or formatted. Images can be included via formatted references that start with an exclamation mark. In contrast to this, it is still complicated to include multimedia content. Based on the previous notation, it is possible in Lear script to mark a link as an audio file by adding a starting question mark, which can be interpreted as an ear. Due to the combination of images and sound, it is possible to insert videos. One of the benefits that lays in this notation is that every common markdown viewer will still generate a fully working link to these resources. You might probably have noticed that some examples contain HTML comments with additional annotations. This is a cheap way of formatting any kind of elements, such as text, images, tables, videos, etc. A starting comment defines the format of the entire block, whereby a trailing comment changes the format of its predecessor only. This way it is even possible to define complex animation sequences. 
while the content remains readable with another Markdown viewer, since they tend to ignore comments. From our experience, we know that a lot of produced images represent simple diagrams that represent functions, signal waves, trends, etc. These have to be generated with Excel, Nuplot, MATLAB or other tools, and to be exported, which makes it also difficult to change them or to translate labels. Leah script offers the opportunity to draw diagrams directly within the document. Such diagrams can be easily adapted and it is not necessary to switch to another tool. This is turned into a nicely rendered diagram, wherein the color and the size of dots is defined by the original characters. If necessary, it is also possible to depict complex issues, such as graphs, UML diagrams, or even pictures with the help of simple characters. Additionally, it is also possible to use any kind of Unicode character. Thus, Lia script has support for Chinese, Greek, Arabic, or any other kind of characters and symbols. Dot. One of the language feature we wanted at most was an easy way to integrate quizzes in different flavors and thus to give learners the possibility to check their knowledge. Quizzes are always associate with double brackets such that to add a text quiz you only have to enter the solution in double braces and the input field. Check and resolve buttons are generated automatically. Some might adapt the question to handle the ambiguity in this case. But let us try out what Lia script has to offer. It is either possible to add hints by adding question marks in double brackets and let the user decide if he needs help by clicking onto the associated button in the rendered course. The optional script tag allows to check the input. In this case to trim it and to transform it lowercase and finally to compare it with different possible solution. Therefore the at input dash macro gets replaced by the current user input. The trailing markdown blocks surrounded by two lines of stars show a more detailed explanation, which appears either if the user input was correct or if the user clicked onto the resolve button. A single choice quiz is defined by stylized radio buttons, where the X marks the right solution and only one line is allowed to contain the X contain. Extensions with hints, solutions, or JavaScript checks can also be applied. Dot. How would you encode a multiple choice quiz with a typewriter, probably similarly as we did it? A generic quiz can be defined with the help of an exclamation mark in double brackets and a script tag. In this case a random number is used to generate the outcome. Additional HTML elements might be required to define different input possibilities. In the following two parts are intended to explain how a section can be divided into several fragments and how speech output can be generated. If you are using the online rendered version of this course at Leah Script website, then you will probably have noticed that there is a button in the upper right corner. It allows switching between three different display modes. The user can decide if he or she rather wants to listen to the explanatory text as in a presentation or to read it like a book.
defining fragments and revealing them step by step is quite simple. Only a number in double braces has to be put in front of a markdown block. Fragments with only one number will sustain until the end of a slide. A point of disappearance can be defined by putting a minus and a second number into double braces. Inline fragments can be defined by putting the fragment number and the elements to appear into successive braces. And it is also possible to attach different blocks to the same fragment number. Either by attaching a number to every block or by putting them into a body of stars. As it was done with the solution in sec.2.3.4. Voice output is implemented with the help of responsive voice. Within an initial comment tag at the beginning of the document, it is possible to define the default voice for a course. This voice can be changed at every section as well as within every voice comment itself. Such comments are treated as extended fragments, which are used to explain certain fragments in more detail. Therefore, they are defined similar to block fragments surrounded by minuses. Depending on the presentation mode, these texts are either displayed within the slide or read out loud. This way it is also possible to implement a dialogue between different persons. This text is spoken by a female. I should speak with a UK-like accent. Я говорю по-русски с женским голосом. In the previous sections we had presented syntactic extensions to Markdown. But the internet is full libraries and possibilities that are might be necessary for a particular course or topic. In contrast to many other Markdown interpreters LearScript allows integrating JavaScript, HTML, and CSS directly within the document. Additionally, it has support for a macro notation that allows automating and thus simplify repetitive and tedious tasks. It is possible use HTML everywhere and if you want to make use of a certain JavaScript library or CSS file, the URLs have to be included in the main comment tag at first. Using the keyword Script followed by a colon and a URL or multiple URLs. JavaScript can be integrated and similarly by using the keyword. Link style sheets can be loaded. Afterwards it is possible everywhere to access the new functionality. The following example depicts how the JavaScript library chartist is used to plot a certain graph. And this is the resulting graph rendered by chartist. In sec.2.3.4, the at input macro has already been used to mark the replacement for the user input. A macro always starts with an at symbol and can be defined in the maran comment of a document. Macros describe simple rules for text replacement. For the one line at red macro, everything following the colon defines the replacement text. Parameter substitutions are defined by a at symbol followed by a number. These extensions can then be used arbitrarily in the document, as shown in the following example. A macro can also call other macros. And more complex macros can be defined as a block consisting of multiple HTML, Markdown, or JavaScript elements. In this example the use of chartist should be simplified by changing the ID for the div element and the content to be drawn is passed as the second parameter. 
This macro can also be called via a function like notation, since commas are used as separators for the parameters. Backticks must be used here to pass the second parameter as an entire string. Admittedly, for very long entries, this can quickly become unreadable. For this reason, macros can also be called within a code block. Therefore only the respective macro must be called in the head of the block. The body of the block is then passed as a single parameter. This makes it easier to define complex macros and additionally, all popular markdown viewers should at least display this kind of inputs in a nicely rendered code block with syntax highlighting, which enables the interpretation of data. The following syntax can be used to combine several markdown code blocks into one project. To the different files titles can be associated, and they can be opened and closed. The additional script tag at the end identifies these blocks as executable code and defines how to handle the contents of each block. In this case the at input macro is called with a parameter, which defines which code block gets substituted at this position. The Lear script interpretation of these blocks then looks like this. All files are editable and a linear version management system is used to track changes. Try it, change the code and go back to earlier versions. as shown in sec.2.3. It is also possible to integrate different JavaScript functionalities and libraries, so that also different programming languages can be supported. The example below shows a simple C program that can be compiled and executed using the RexTester API. The more complex definition of the associated script tag was provided using the at RexTester eval macro only by attaching such a macro, any code block can be turned into an executable one. The following syntax can be used to combine As shown, the combination with other languages and visualizations using HTML and JavaScript is also possible. See the interactive example for the programming language processing. for such JavaScript libraries and also for the use of other functionalities. We offer templates that have been implemented via our macro system. 4. Dot. These can be used freely and furthermore it also minimizes the breaks when reading the original markdown document.
Looking back onto sec.2, we did not discuss points 3 to 6 so far. Leah's script was built around the idea of course development as open source projects. Thus, anything from one course can be used in another course. Either by linking directly onto a slide or by simply copy and pasting the required parts. Rec 3. Dot. Furthermore, we offer a growing number of templates, which are founded on our macro system, that ease the usage and integration of new and complex web technologies, Rec 6. Leah script currently supports three different styles of rendering modes. See Sec.2.3.5, allowing every user to choose his, her preferred type. Rec 5. Dot. Concerning the preferred course language. Translating a single text document is much easier than translating a whole software project or a YouTube video or podcast and Leo script offers some options that allow to host different language versions of one course at the same project, Rec 4.